This is the Extra 10% Podcast, helping you get paid tomorrow for what you do today. Invite John Holowaty and Mark Hudson to join you at the breakfast table, ride with you to work, or just randomly stumble across them in the afternoon. Let's get the extra 10% out of your day. I actually um, watched a YouTube video this morning, which was a very interesting concept. And I feel we already kind of do this anyway, which is that I know I look like a fool with this hat on, but we'll just roll with it because my hair's even worse. Um, but yeah, interesting concept where he basically, this guy on YouTube put up like an image and on that image had a load of squares um and it was like basically each square represented a month in his life and so he basically like he was like 31 32 and so and he would like sort of essentially predicted that he's going to die around about 80 i guess that's like the average age for a guy or something these days i think and like what it basically did was an image representation of like how long you've got on this planet and because and then it's sort of like um, which i just thought was a interesting concept of like he could see the 30 years that he's already spent on the planet um and then the fact that he's only got 50 left and it was like I, and then i did it i was like yeah i'm gonna do this where like each uh, so i just made this kind of spreadsheet and it it kind of it makes you realize that that time is finite and there's only so yeah. many years and kind of coupled with that is there's only so many years where you've got the same energy that you do in your twenties and thirties. And so like the same amount of hours that you're putting in now that I'm putting in now, like you can't do that when you're 60, like you just, it just physically can't do it or mentally. So I just thought it was a very interesting concept of like, yeah, s- sort of seeing your you life what? It's- as an image. It's cool, I, and and it's interesting. I've been listening to a lot of stuff about that this week, and without even chatting to you about it, to be fair, because we oh, don't yeah. really keep in touch with each other in the week. But the same concept, um, I heard Ryan Holiday and uh, Tom. I can't remember ever pronounce his last name. They were discussing the same thing, and I actually had a call this morning where I said to myself, I said to my team, like. The reason I'm working so hard now is I don't want to wait. I don't, right. I don't, I don't want to wait for the goods. I don't want to wait any, any longer than I have to. I feel like I've already waited. Like I had a goal that I wanted to hit when I was 30 and I've not hit it yet. Right. Yeah. I probably could have if I'd have made some slightly different choices, but the truth be known is I haven't hit it. So this has really brought it home for me. Like this, this lockdown period has really brought home the, The fact that we are ticking, 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 ticking away our time of what you want to achieve, of what you want to do. And it doesn't mean that you've got to rush things. You've just got to have that sense of urgency. And one of the biggest things... Yeah, I I, I get it. And and, and that the, the biggest thing that I see in successful people is they make the right choices. Like I had the opportunity yesterday to go out and meet a couple of friends, but I was exhausted. So I ended up having a sleep on the sofa instead. Cause when I rationalized it in my brain, I thought, well, what good am I going to be to that situation? And what good, am, um, what good is it going to be for me when I've had a, like just a full on week and this is my quietest day. So I just thought, you know what, let's make some good choices. And this is one of the things that I've been trying to do this year is just slow down a little bit, make some good choices. And actually, it was a much better choice for me to have a two-hour power nap um, and and then get up and then crack on with some work Saturday night because I can't be doing anything anyway. So it's just that sense of urgency and then get up today. Obviously, we're filming this a, a day later than normal. But, that, but I've managed to get so much stuff done. I've been filming content all day yeah, and writing yeah. stuff. So I think just having that sense of urgency and, and, and having it, maybe what you've done there with that exercise, it just makes it so much clearer to you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, imagine, so like, here's how my mornings will now start is yes, I'm going to look at everything I want to achieve. You know, I want to live in Hollywood. I want to sell my company for a hundred million. You know, there's, a, there's some big goals. Obviously there's lots of family ones there, like certain things with Lauren and Phoenix and such, but like, I'm going to be looking at those list of goals at the same time alongside it. I'm going to be looking at the ticker, the time. Yeah. You know, right. It's just like, Hey, look, there's only so many squares uh, sort of left. And I guess what I don't want people to confuse this with right now is like, it almost sounds like what you were saying 
is kind of like um, contradictory is that like you've been slowing down to make choices, but then you're also saying, but you need to be quicker what you're doing. But what it's actually doing, what you're, what you're actually doing is you're making the right decisions so that time is not wasted. So it means exactly. that you got up, yeah, you relaxed yesterday, you got that power nap in yesterday, you were able to do more work, which means that you will achieve your goal that you were saying about for 30, you'll achieve that goal quicker um, because you didn't go out to the bar and then you would have had to have had today off to relax from last night's bar thing where you were able to work all day today. So it's kind of like you, you recover to perform, right? right. It's, and it's like, what are you, what are the days? Like you've got to look at what days do I need to be top form? It's a little bit like a football team. You know, when they go, right, I'm resting the best players for right, yeah, like just game. It's like crappy FA Cup games and stuff at the beginning. Yeah, it's like, I just uh, I, I just think like Saturday, Sunday are days where de there's definitely a drop in activity of where I'm needed, where I'm required within my business. So if I am going to get a chance to just recover, and I made some... Um, I made some choices again because moving moving from one place to another and I dropped the ball a little bit in terms of my uh, morning structure. I think I mentioned that on the last podcast. So I'd started getting up a little bit later than I had been. Still early, but not been getting up at 6.30. The, the, not this week, but the week before. So this week I made it a must again. I was like, right, I've got to get back into this routine, getting up at 6.30, getting up before the sunrise. I go out onto the balcony and just listen to the birds chitter-chattering away. And I uh, don't know what they're talking about, by the way, but just listening to the birds, just having a moment, having a cup of tea and just like then going in doing my journaling. I've been doing that again this week, but I think changing that, that, that schedule again has had an impact on my energy level. So it's almost like, right, I just needed to recover yesterday. I had a, I had a power nap and uh, I felt great afterwards and I feel good now. I feel ready. Like I'm itching to get started again for the new week. Whereas if I hadn't of, and, and the people that I were going to meet probably would have been on a different wavelength anyway, because they've been out drinking. And so I, I, the, the normal the, or the old me would have definitely just gone and would have gone and got drunk, uh, would have drank. Well, I would have definitely gone and drank alcohol and then I would have had a good time, don't get me wrong, but then the knock-on effects of that is, is it taking you away from the bigger picture? Are your right. decisions taking you away from your goal or, or towards your goal? Is something that we always say. Yeah, and, and a quote I heard which like I live by now more than ever, you know, obviously we've already spoke about this new routine that I've got and kind of like, I only eat once a day and like I've nothing happens apart from family time between seven and nine every single night. And I like close my laptop at half six and that's it. I don't see anything business wise till, uh, you know, like in the morning basically. So I can dedicate that time to family. But a quote I'm really living by at the moment is you've, you've got two choices. You either sacrifice everything for the thing you want or the thing you want ends up being the sacrifice. And it's just like, do you want to go to the bar and like have a few drinks, which don't get me wrong. I love doing that. Right. Or am I willing to sacrifice that so I can own the bar? And it's like, right. Okay, cool concept. Let's pursue that. And like, that's kind of where my brain's at right now. And I actually had a conversation with a good friend of mine, like, um, a few nights ago, right? And I was just explaining to him this new, this, this thing I've been doing the last couple of months of like really structuring my days where I'm getting up at half five, you know, I've got a little dog, so let her out for a toilet, feed her. And then I meditate for like 20 minutes um, and like just kind of clear my brain, I suppose, think about the day. Um, and then I drive to the office now. So like, it's really good where our office is because like no one's there. So it's like, I just turn up at this massive office on my own. It's great. So, and it, from a psychological point of view as well is getting myself out of the house has got me into like a, a better routine. Go to the office, look at my goals, look at everything I'm trying to achieve. Then I, sh I write down everything um, that I want to achieve for the day. I've actually already written that down the day before, but just in case anything's changed in my brain over the last, like while I've been asleep, I write it down again, what I want to achieve in the day. Um, and then I go to work, I just do it. And so like, I just crack on with it. I've got no notifications on my phone. I'll show you this cool thing. Is like, um, like genuinely, that is my phone. <laughs> like I just have those four apps, which is call in my like aura, the ring thing that tracks Chrome for internet and then music. 
And that is it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that can happen on that phone because like my iMessage, my WhatsApp, everything is on this laptop. So if that laptop is closed, so like, you know, when I go leave work at half six, I close the laptop, leave it there. Um, nobody can interfere between me and spending time with little Phoenix and Lauren. And I was terrible at that before. So someone, so I was explaining this, like the structure to somebody and then they were like, Hmm, it seems like pretty selfish. Like you're, you know, you're, you know, cause he was like, well, what if somebody invited you to a meal on a Wednesday? I was, saying, I was just like, default answer is no, unless it's like the queen or like 50 cent. <laughs> like the answer is no, I'm not going to that meal. Both of them um, together. <laughs> both of them together. Yeah. The best mates. Um, but like, yeah, the default answer is no. And he was like, well, isn't that a bit selfish? And I was just like, well, yeah, actually, I'm being selfish, very small element of selfish now, so that I can be so like giving in the future. Whereas what it actually is, is everyone else in my eyes is selfish forever because they never dedicate a small period of time in their life. Because I'm only thinking of like really being this structured for like two, three years at the most. But at that point, I know that my business will be like, 10 times further on than what I would achieve in those three years if I didn't do it. Um, and then you can sort of relax, chill, look at different things, make different choices. But it's like how I saw it. Like when he said that about, Oh, seems like really selfish. It like, I, I thought it was like, it should be, from... it should be selfish because it's your life at the end of the day. So yeah, you've true. got the right to do what you want to do. And if your if your thing is, well, I'm not contactable between these hours, then that's it. I remember reading in the four hour work week, like Tim Ferriss saying, I open my laptop up between, I answer emails between 10 and 12 and between six and seven in an evening and that's it. And people can't get hold of me in between them because otherwise, you know, our phones ruin our lives. They right. not ruin our lives, but run our lives and can ruin our lives. And you get caught on this wave of momentum where, you know, when my phone decided to switch itself off today, I couldn't get it back on for a, a couple of hours. And I started panicking for no reason on a Sunday, thinking, oh, no, what if it doesn't work? And what if people are trying to get in touch with me? What I want to ask you about your thing, though, is this. So your goals are really big and they're up, they're up there on the wall and your time's ticking in front of you. How does that work in terms of you not being there yet? To what, like you're obviously closer than you were a year ago. Yeah. But I think there's something that we need to kind of put in a, not a warning sign, but a little, I, I just look at it from my point of view where I've set really big goals in the past and I'm nowhere near it. It's like I'm not even a quarter of the way there. And sometimes it can be a little bit demotivating to then, to, to almost then go, and I've done it in the past, so I've gone, uh, retract that actually and I, right. I think yeah, it's so yeah. important that you don't fall in the trap of setting all this stuff up that ends up actually making you retract your goals because they just seem too far away or it just seems to be taking too much effort or too much time and that's what a lot of people do they get they give up because it's too lofty so right. have you got something in between is yeah, it like exactly so my major, I guess, flaw, and I think we touched on this on another, another podcast, actually, is that when I first started Let's One, I only had the very first goals of like, you know, office, acquiring staff, whatever, and some low turnover revenue. And then I had the very end goals of the sell for 100 million. Whereas now I've got like six month plans, three month plans, obviously three year plans. I've got like the whole breakdown of where does that 100 million, if you will, sit. And then there's like, 20 things in between and things really really simple like even just having monthly sales targets as well and it's like yeah if i achieve these monthly sales targets i'm on that yellow brick road to the right place if that makes sense um and so because that has been a major downfall for me exactly what you're highlighting there is that i've only ever lived completely in the future and so obviously when i'm yeah. talking here i use that as an example as a as the main driver but like you know things on my goal list um are things like uh, have a sales system that is is like repeatable and for like as in that i'm not involved in it right and and one of my goals is that i read a trust pilot review from a client who i've never seen or heard of so it means that somebody's prospected them with the company someone's then sold them someone's then onboarded them give them and delivered their product and then they've enjoyed that like whole process so well they've left us a review and i'm there on a saturday night and i check the reviews and there's, a, there's somebody there that I've never heard of or seen of. Because obviously right now, we're, we're a reasonably small team. 
I know every client that comes in, right? And to be fair, I'm pretty much head salesperson. So like I sell most of the clients that come in. So that's kind of, yeah, my, my long story answer to that is that you've got to have interim goals. You've got to have ones that like you can achieve this month. You can achieve in this six month period this year. Cause you're right. If you're only thinking about the hundred million, because here's the thing as well that could happen is like a lot of people, when they achieve big goals, they don't see any progress. And then the last year, all the progress happens. So you need to have things that keep you going so that you have the opportunity to have that last year spike, if you will. Uh, otherwise you'll just, you know, I guess not <laughs> have that spike. And then the other thing was this, like saying no, getting good at saying no is something that I've read a lot about this year is the top people. And I can't remember who it was that said it, but it was like, if I have to think about it, it's a no. Yeah. If, if you have, to, if it's not an instant, hell yeah, it's a no. Like, and that, and that is, it. it's, it's almost like you, it flips on its head at the beginning. When you're an entrepreneur, you've got to say yes to everything, right? This is what I believe you've got to say. And this is what I did when I first started it was like, yes to everything. Yeah. I'll go networking in the morning. Yeah. I'll train you at that time. Yeah. I'll run an event. Yeah. I'll be on a call. Yeah. I'll train you. Yeah. I'll go there. I'll do this. I'll, I was just saying yes to absolutely everything. And then I continued to say yes to absolutely everything because I thought it was what we were meant to do. And I didn't want to let people down. And I had a big block around letting people down. I didn't want to let people down. So I would always say yes. And then I would either have to try and get myself out of it, which would cause me stress because I didn't really want to do it. And to, to, the, to a total point of actually signing a lease to take over a bigger gym, when I really if I look back now, deep down, wasn't ready and didn't really want to do it. And I ended up do committing to something that I wasn't 100% sure on because I just got told, you've got to say, you know, you're in the mindset of you've got to say yes yeah. to everything and you'll say yes and figure out a way to do it later. Well, actually, no, right, is a great answer. No, I'm not ready. Like, no, I'm not, I don't want to do this. I've, I, and when you think about it, when you have a minute to just think, is it what I really want to do or would, and you said it before, would my time be spent better on something else? Cause we've only got so many units. I think you mentioned this the other week, like let's say you've got 20 units of energy and time per day. If you spend 20 units per day on growing, let's one, right. That you're going to get to your goal a lot quicker than you would if you spent Five units a day on growing less one. Five units down the pool hall with the guys. Five units playing computer games. Five units walking the dog, right? Five units. And I'm not saying you can't do that stuff, but this is where, this is the difference between people who get what they want and don't get what they want. When you look back at your life, it's like, well, you spent all your units on playing computer games. That's why you're a master of, uh, you know, Whatever. No, but you won't even be a master at it. You see, that's the thing. Yeah, it's maybe like, not. You, you need to put 20 units into playing FIFA or Call of Duty if you want to be at that level where you yeah, want to Yeah, yeah, fair enough. That. Yeah. And that's also okay. And so like, spreading themselves, so spreading the five units over. So that's why you've got a little beer belly because you spent five units a day drinking beer. Right. You spent yeah. five units a day playing computer games. You spent five units a day, um, you know, watching Sky Sports News, blah, blah, blah. You know the deal anyway. So. I, and I think you're right. Like, let's say these 20 units, so many people are doing the five units over, spread over different, different things over a long period of time. And it's the old quote of it's success or failure isn't an overnight thing. It's a daily habit of decisions that either yeah. take you towards what you want to achieve or don't. So that was a good win for me on the weekend because it was something that, I would definitely have said yes to, and it would have definitely involved alcohol back in the day. Cause one of the things that I used to do, and this is why it's so important that you get good at saying no, is I'd say no, I'd say yes to something that I didn't really want to go on. And then because I didn't really want to do it, I'd then use alcohol to make it bearable fun, right? To just to, to oh, I've got to go and do this. Well, I'm going to get mithered or this is going to happen or it's going to be the, and it's like the only way to turn it into a good time is really 
crack a few beers when you're there and, uh, you know, just let your hair down. And you do have a good time, don't get me wrong. I, I've never done anything where I thought, well, that was rubbish. But at the, at, at where I'm at in my life right now, for the goal that I want to achieve, to, to save up the money that I want to save up, to, to get the things that I want to get, I have to be really, really careful of where I spend my units and where I put my time. And it's the same yeah. with you. And it's, it's like all life is, is people convincing you to spend your time and money. Like if you really yeah. think about it, that's family, friends, the person, the, the advert on the TV, whatever. Everything is spend your time and spend your money with me. So you've got to then think, well, I'm not just going to do that willy nilly. I'm not just going to like float. You've got to decide, actually, do I want to spend my time and money on there? Do I want to spend my time and money on there? And like, you've got to be, I mean, Grant Cardone has a book that's literally called Be Obsessed or Be Average. And that's kind of what we're just saying there. You either put all 20 units into something that you're passionate about and you like, and that could be your family, by the way. Like, you could put all your, your energy. Like, I know um, as a parent, my mom, that's what she put her, all her energy into. So she was fortunate enough she could stop work. So my dad put all his energy into the, the work side. My mom put all her energy into the family side. And she was, the, I guess, the best mom I could ever, you know, you know, imagine, right? So it doesn't have to be business that you put all your units into. You just got to decide what you care about the most. Um, but once you decide that, is don't let anything stop you from putting all 20 units in. And if it does, then just default to no. No, I'm not doing it. Like, and, and like again, people will say, oh, well, that's just selfish. Well, is it really because I'm getting towards my goal, which allows me to do X, Y, or Z with the people I actually care about? So for me to say no to like a meal, let's say out on a Wednesday or whatever, you know, in normal kind of periods of time, I'm saying no to people that might not even exist to me in five years time. So is that a big deal in the end anyway? No, is it it? Like, and you're only going to put your energy into something that you love. Like, let's face it, as an entrepreneur and people that watch this podcast or listen to it, you guys listening to this are entrepreneurs. So you're doing what you love. If you don't do what you love, then you won't naturally put your units into it. I think that's another thing. And to add on to the Grant Cardone stuff, he also wrote another book, Sell or Be Sold. And that ties in with what you said about people are trying to get you to spend your money and spend your time. That's the only influence that the media's having with you. The newspaper, the newspaper headlines are designed to attract you to spend your time reading their paper. Why? Because then you'll buy the advertising that people have, have paid to advertise in there. You'll then buy into the, the storyline that will be in the next day. It's just, it's an amazing quote that I've never heard it before, but it's so, so true. And you're right. It's people want you to spend your time and your money with them. Sky Sports is probably the biggest um, the biggest example of that from my lifetime, where I remember the very first game that was on Sky in 1993. And since then, Sky Sports has just evolved into this machine where, like, I used to sit and watch Sky Sports News for hours. Like, it would be on in the background. It's become, like, the third or maybe the the fifth person in your house, Sky Sports oh, News. It's like, it's always on in the background. Maybe it's Alexa now for people. This is what Amazon's done really well. Like, it's so important. And you can use that to your advantage. You can think, well, what can I do to, what can I create? How can I get my business to be the, the, the extra family member, the, the person that's always talked about in the household? Because if you, if you want to sell your products and you want to sell your concepts, you need to figure out a way of getting people to spend more money with your products and your concepts and to invest more time and energy into it. How do you do that? Right. And, and that's, that's what Sky has done. They've turned football into, oh, not, not even a way of life, life for a lot of people. Like they would watch matches every single night of the week without fail even they'd get into the habit of watching a game that they didn't really care about. They had no importance to their life at all. But because the subliminal message on Sky Sports News in the background, the adverts, the pre-interviews for it all, oh, I think I'll watch that. Yeah, and then you get before, sucked you know, into the... And then the advertisement for the beers that come after it, it's so clever how it's all intertwined and interweaved that... 
I'll never forget a guy speaking at a convention I went to and he said, did you know that the biggest distributor of toys in the world is McDonald's? Right, yeah. Because they've got the biggest joint venture with um, with Disney. Disney and Pixar is one of the... Uh, Disney and Pixar's joint venture with McDonald's is the biggest toy distribution thing in the world. And it, it's subliminal. So what you do is you go to the cinema... And on the back of your cinema ticket is a McDonald's voucher for half price Happy Meal. So the kid sees it on the back of the ticket. So smart. You read the ticket. Oh, I want to go to McDonald's. I want to go to McDonald's. No adult has ever walked into McDonald's and not bought something because the smell, they've got the fans at the back of the kitchen that portray, portray or whatever the word is, propel the smell through the, through the restaurant. You're like... Oh, I, I, I didn't. I wasn't even hungry when I got in here. Now I'm starving. All right, so you get something. Your kid gets something. Then you get the toy, and then on the back of your McDonald's receipt is the ticket for the cinema to go again and watch the next movie with a discount. So it's like they're both feeding each other. Subliminal. It's like the beer, the beer and the football games. It's like so clever and. You've just highlighted some massive there. Like that was a big breakthrough in my, in my head. I knew, I kind of knew it anyway, but you defined it in one sentence where it's like, yeah, we are just getting sold to continually. And that's why you've got to switch the TV off. That's why you've got to switch the radio off because yeah, you're yeah. getting sold to every single and, day. And that's like, and, and like I say, it's not just businesses. Your friends are doing this. When they post on yeah. their social media, essentially asking for likes and comments, you've got to spend time liking and commenting. And so, like, it's a waste of time. Like, nobody ever, nobody ever got depressed because they left social media or, like, whatever. But people get depressed because they've joined it. And it's like, uh, you know, and that's all to do with time because what happens is people do spend their time on other people's lives instead of their own. So they watch and they're like, oh, can't believe this person's up to that and doing this and doing that. And they've been sat on their ass on the sofa while that person's been out doing something with their lives and then they get depressed about that when really they should just never have gone on the social in the first place and gone and done it themselves. Um, but it's like, be interesting to do a week's diary of what you, where you spend your time every single hour. Yeah, 30 like, minutes. I, I said that last week or the week before is set your alarm for 30 minutes, turn it off obviously at night, but set your alarm for 30 minutes and just note down everything you do all day for one week. And you will be shocked at how much time you waste on just nothing because you go you might legitimately get a notification on facebook right that is someone you care about or whatever you go to answer it you go to reply but you don't just end there you don't just close it you you then scroll then you do it and then like that five minute conversation with that person that did matter turns into 35 minutes of just nonsense that didn't matter and like here's the thing i've made it that i've only got two hours to spend with lauren and phoenix in the evening right so I, I, I'm working all day where I have no notifications anyway. So my emails don't ping, nothing goes off. I have nothing on my phone anyway. So I have to actively go and check a Facebook. I have to actively go and check. I mean, that's literally the only one I really check anyway. Um, but anyway, what I was trying to say is that like when we do spend time together, because it's finite, right? There's only two hours a night, seven till nine. And then I go to sleep and I wake up at 5.30, right? Um, because that's so finite, I make sure it counts. So like yeah. I'm looking Lauren in the eyes, Phoenix in the eyes. I'm spending time. We don't watch films or anything like that. We're just talking about what's happened in the day. You know, it, it, this right now is obviously Phoenix is learning new stuff every day. So we're talking about that. And it's like, and then on a Sunday, right, is it's family day, no business, laptop stays in the office, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, we actually use that time. Like we actually spend time together. Whereas before when we were just, we, we had any time to spend together, we didn't. We didn't spend it on that same level. We might be together, but we were watching a film or we'd both be on our yeah. phones or like whatever, you know. And it's like, we, we, I might as well have been at the office working. She might as well have been working. Like, so now, but those two hours are so crucial. So it's almost like, and I know this is, is key anyway, because one of the key mental triggers for like getting people to do stuff um, is scarcity. You know, there's a lack of something. You're more oh, like, no, that's you what it. I was going to say. I was going to say it's like, these companies and, and this stuff is all about fear of loss. Yeah. But so, so here's the thing. If you know that that gets you to take action, that fear of loss, I just built it into my life into things that I actually want. So like 
the fear of loss for me, I, I, showed, I told you about the, you know, the, the, you've got 80 years to live and you've only got these, these many blocks left. That's a fear of loss, right? But the fear of loss for me uh, is like, yeah, I've only got two hours with Lauren and Phoenix. Like, I'm not going to waste these. I'm not going to text people. I'm not going to be on social because I've only got two hours here. I've got to make it count. And you just end up spending that time so much better. Um, so I think scarcity is a key thing. And, uh, like, and then, like I said, it, it doesn't mean that you do things faster it, or like or you, you're trying to do everything. It means that the things you do actually count. So like you saying last night, I'm not going to go to the bar because I've got stuff to do tomorrow. So I'm going to make the decision now to have a rest so that I'm like prime and ready to do that. Um, and that's what it does. So it almost lets you like take a side step to review it and then go exactly. forward. But the forward leap is like, it is a leap rather than one step. Um, rather than just it. being blown into it like the wind you're like a right. little leaf blowing around in the wind you're just taking a you're just hovering like almost like a plane before it lands just hovering and then just right that's the right decision and it, yeah. it's good right without wanting to waste any more of our time we need to uh, wrap it up because I've got to jump on a call absolutely so, uh, you have yeah, a good guys, like subscribe tell your friends about this podcast <laughs> yeah. and uh, we'll hit record now Yeah, 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 imagine. All right, man, we'll catch you in a bit. The Extra 10% Podcast. Remember to like the John and Mark Facebook page on Facebook or visit johnandmark.co.uk for exclusive updates and content. Why not share this podcast with a friend and help them get paid tomorrow for what they do today?